What is going on guys? Jason from YouTube here breaking down a new stock that got listed uh, as I was going through my comments, I actually got this probably about a month ago, uh, but I just kind of sat on it. I remember pulling it up and not being too impressed with it. Then it got mentioned again uh, in the comments a couple days ago, and then I saw another post on it. And so I said, well, let's take a look at it and see what we got. And so um, the company we're talking about today is Metin Ed Tech X, ticker symbol M-E-T-X. So it's a Chinese company, which is why kind of has a funny name. Anyway, what we're going to be breaking down today is what is this company, the history, the financials, and then what I am personally doing about it. So the first thing is, what is this company? Now, as always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, just some guy on YouTube. So uh, this company is a Chinese company that teaches people English. And so obviously this concept is not new. We know that there are a bunch of companies doing this, but the interesting thing about this company is that it's starting from the other side, where a lot of companies that I'm familiar with, and again, as a lot of you guys know, if you're a subscriber, you know that I am in education. So teaching English uh, overseas or teaching English through apps is not a new concept, but usually those companies are American and they go over and try to, you know, find clients in China, but this one starts in China and works the other way. And so I'm very, very interested and intrigued about this company. So that's kind of the first thing that said, okay, maybe I'll, I'll do a little bit more research. I'll do a little bit more due diligence. And then as I started researching this company, I found a few other things. So with this uh, stock specifically, there are 53 million shares outstanding, which it is what it is. But here's the part I do like. 70% are held by insiders and 7% are held by institutions. So put those two numbers together, we have 77% held by basically some serious big dogs that are not going to be selling. Now, let's talk about the history a little bit. The history of this, well, one year ago, uh, almost today is, is the end of March, this company came to the stock market via SPAC, which we all love our SPACs don't we? A lot of SPACs have been doing very well, but as we've learned even here recently with CCIV, SPACs can be very, very volatile, that the numbers can change very quickly. And so even with this company, um, there was a lot of hype. The numbers were very good, 2018, 2019, 2020, and right as the pandemic started and China was getting blasted, this company comes to the American stock market via SPAC. So how did the stock go? Well, it was a slow bleed starting from March when it peaked out at $17. It tumbles all the way down through December, just very slowly, 2%, 3%. 5%, 2%, 1%, just a very, very slow, painful, gradual tumble till we get to December. Then they actually do a round of fundraising. Now, the interesting to know about this stock, or really this company, is that while a lot of American companies during the pandemic started doubling down on the internet. So uh, you look at a company like Zoom, did very well. You look at Amazon, you look at Google, you look at the Facebook. All of our internet companies were doing very well. Now, this company is obviously heavily internet based. So the question is, why did it not do well? And so here in America, we got a lot of stimulus money. We got unemployment boost. We were making sure that our economy stayed running and the government was gonna give us as much money to make that happen. Now, over in China, this speaking English, this company is a luxury. And so if your economy gets shut down for a couple weeks or a couple months or it opens and gets shut back down again, you're going to cut back on the luxuries. And so truth be told, the financials here, 2020 was a rough year for this company. The financials came out and it was not very good looking. And that's why in December they had to do a round of fundraising. And so through this fundraising round, it hurt their stock a lot. But we just got some news over 2021, quarter number one. And I want to read this to you. It says, recorded is a 591% increase 
in gross billing of its junior ELT, which is a fourth of the company, in February compared to the same period last year. Now, you got to remember the pandemic kind of sweeps across the whole globe. And so in China, the pandemic was already there by February. So these are a little bit of pandemic numbers, but in February, things are not nearly as bad as they are in March, April, and May. And so this number may be a little skewed, but not that skewed, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm an American. I'm not in China. I'm just giving you my opinion from what I'm able to research and see on my side. So quarter one here is absolutely monstrous. Some things that I really, really like about this company. Well, they just raise their prices. And if I'm a consumer, I don't like that. But if I'm an investor, hey, if we're getting more profitable, power to the people, power to us investors, I like that idea. And so with this, I am really, really liking where this company is at right now. That if you, again, if you look at the stock over the last year, you see it is very, 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 very painful. And then in December, the stock drops at an all time low because they do have to raise some funds. But once the fundraising is over, once those warrants are closed and everything is over, they've kind of done pretty well over the last three months. And again, this news just came out. And so if you look at the stock going back to, uh, I want to get the date here, March 5th you will see that this company has done very, very well, that it's gained about two, five, six, seven percent every day, and it's had a really nice consolidation. And again, I'm not a huge technical analysis guy, but you can tell that there is a trend line, that there is a support line, that we are looking a whole lot more bull than bear. And so what will I be doing? I'm gonna go ahead and open up a nice 2% position in here. And so, if you followed me before, if this is your new video, the way I talk about uh, my portfolio is always in percentages. Because if I tell you, oh, I'm going to buy 100 shares or 1,000 shares or 10,000 shares, doesn't really mean that much if you don't know what my total portfolio is. So I always try to talk about in percentages. So I'm going to open up a 2% position over the next three or four days. With Inside of that 2%, 50% of it will probably be tomorrow or, or today, as I'm making this video, it'll be tomorrow. I know I'm getting confused here. Will be Tuesday. And I want to go ahead and establish a large position because I think this stock will continue to trend up over the next couple of days. And as more and more financials get reported, we could see a good a good pop here. Again, the, the support line is strong, which makes me very bullish on the company. And it's a company that I can invest in and feel good in. And as the Chinese economy has recovered, some luxuries like learning English will be back at the top of the list. And so that's why I'm going to go ahead and open up a position here. And I really like this company moving forward. And again, is it going to double overnight? Probably not. But in the scenario we're at, where we're bleeding from everywhere, all of our growth stocks are bleeding. All of our value stocks are holding on and doing well. I'm going to start selling some of my value stocks and I'm going to invest in my growth stocks, but I also want to look for the ability to do some quick plays, some quick stuff that may take a pop, just like we talked about ITP or Global Star. Those are quick, quick stocks that you can get in, get a good return, and help fund your total portfolio for the stocks, again, that you believe in, whether that's the growth stocks or if you want to play more risky stuff, more penny stocks, but this is going to help fund those things. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Something I haven't talked about recently, if you are looking for a brokerage, if you're in Robinhood, get out of Robinhood. Get out of Robinhood. Join Weeble. I got the link below. You sign up, you get free stocks, um, and then I get a free stock, which is kind of cool. You get to spin the wheel. Maybe you'll get Facebook. Maybe you'll get Google. I haven't gotten any of those yet, but who knows? Somebody's got to win them sometime, right? Maybe we'll get lucky. If you want to know what brokerage I prefer, Weeble is probably number two. Schwab is probably number one. Schwab's a little bit more technical, a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
The process is not as refined as Webull. It's not as app friendly. I think Webull is part of the app movement, and so it's a whole lot better from that area. Schwab is a little bit, I guess, the the, the old school uh, investing mentality. So it has tools based more toward the old school. But again, I, I like both of them a lot. But if you're using Robinhood, you got to get out of that. All right. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Hit that share button. Share this with a friend if they're in ultra open uh, da, da, interested in the stock. Let me know in the comments what you think about this stock or if there's another stock that you'd like me to review. And don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.